Next up, we have Volcanion. Its typing has been theorized since Pokemon's earliest days. Fire and water are opposites. What if we put them together? It has an undeniable cool factor for this reason, as well as its design. It is a geyser-like volcanic steam engine in the style of a bull or lion, with cannon-like arms to boot. Volcanion even had its own movie, Volcanion and the Mechanical Marvel. It was the star in a film that also featured Magirna and Zygarde complete, and fittingly so as it was pretty imposing. Today, we'll be exploring how Volcanion performed in the pressurized environment of the competitive scene. And so, we ask, how good was Volcanion actually? But first, Volcanion is fire and so is the sponsor of this video, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark is an app and browser extension that allows you to place your computer or phone virtually in any country as if you're actually there. Surfshark has 3,200 plus servers in 65 countries. And by using Surfshark to connect to servers in other countries, you can get access to content that is normally region locked. For example, if you wanted to watch Naruto Shippuden on American Netflix, well, you can't. But all you have to do is change your IP to Canada and you now have access to 10 seasons of Naruto Shippuden on Canadian Netflix. And of course, being a VPN, Surfshark encrypts your data so that no one can access it while you're online and your privacy is secured. And you can use one account on multiple devices. I personally have Surfshark on my phone, my tablet, and both of my PCs. So if you want a sick VPN and also support the channel to help us produce more content, get an exclusive Surfshark deal by entering promo code FALSEWIPE or clicking the link in the description and get Surfshark VPN for an extra three months for free. And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. Volcanion was dropped into Oraz OU in the summer of 2016, and the player base was unsure on how to take it, as it was so unique in so many ways. There were, of course, a few cries to ban it immediately. Yes, that might not come as too much of a shock, given the rather knee-jerk propensity with which some respond to dangerous new threats, but the idea did have some worthwhile basis. The idea that Volcanion utterly destroyed the balance teams, which were a beacon of stability in the high-octane offensive metagame. Volcanion did do this, but the reason it was never anywhere near any sort of serious consideration for a ban or even a test was because for all its excellent attributes its flaws were not insignificant and were quite easy to take advantage of without even trying that's what weaknesses to stealth rock and earthquake as well as decidedly unimpressive speed will do for you so in that summer of 2016 and for quite some time afterwards volcanian only showed up a handful of times especially because as a result of those aforementioned weaknesses it wasn't the most impactful of pokemon when it did show up make no mistake though Volcanion was utterly loaded with valuable traits. It would just take a while for the player base to figure out how to best use them, as well as working around its weaknesses. Before we delve into how that eventually happened, we'll go over those traits, and we'll start with the obvious, its stab combination. Fire water seems cool, but does it actually do anything significant? The answer is a resounding yes. It meant that Volcanion packed two of the best offensive stab types in the game, both in terms of coverage and high-powered moves, and they complemented each other perfectly. Volcanion was a water-type attacker that grass types wanted no part of thanks to its fire stab, while it was also a fire type attacker that fires and rocks wanted no part of thanks to its water stab. Furthermore, this coverage and power combination was bolstered by Volcanion's incredible natural strength. It packed a Latios and Heatran equivalent base 130 special attack. Oh, and the best part of all, its water stab wasn't Hydro Pump and or Scald a la Keldeo. It was both of those moves at the same time with its signature attack, Steam Eruption, which possessed the power of Hydro Pump while also packing Skull's nasty 30% burn rate. Bummer about the 80% accuracy though. Oh, never mind, because Steam Eruption came in at a near perfect 95%. Such power was brutal enough on its own before being accentuated by additional 12.5% burn damage, wearing down switches like Latios even further. Very few Pokemon could withstand Volcanion's stab combination and not fear a Steam Eruption burn. And with Hidden Power Grass and its arsenal, which it already enjoyed using to directly smack the likes of Slowbro, Keldon, and Manaphy, even those few Pokemon Gastrodon and Jellicent were easily ruined, especially since Volcanion completely walled Jellicent. Finally, for all its prowess as an offensive powerhouse, Volcanion was far from an example of the Rampardos theorem. It was quite good defensively. The water immunity it gained through Water Absorb gave it one of the most valuable defensive traits in the game, giving its team a crucial buffer against Keldeo's dangerous spec skulls and hydros. Volcanion's quadruple ice resistance alongside this water immunity also meant it could help out against many 
variants of the terrifying tail glow manaphy its quadruple fire resistance was also valuable against the many fire spamming threats running around and even its quadruple steel resistance had some use volcanian didn't just have great resists either it was seriously physically bulky which was crucial in compensating for its lack of speed against fast-paced teams its hp was solid and defense was actually not too far behind its special attack this meant it could help against an assortment of powerful physical threats since it didn't just have resist to one of their stabs but also had the bulk to tank their other stab it was neutral to it was massively helpful in slowing down the assaults of bisharp weavile and even mega metagross and charizard x with its bulk letting it withstand even their occasional earthquakes okay all those traits are great and just waiting to be taken advantage of but could they with volcanian's weaknesses being as prominent as they were be taken advantage of consistently the answer a resounding yes it began with the shift in volcanian set the player base's initial instinct had been to slap on choice specs after all a boosted steam eruption was one of the most spammable moves imaginable while powered up fire blasts or flamethrowers weren't far behind the problem was that choice restriction actually made volcanian easier to play around if you switched heat ran into a specs locked flamethrower you were home free against a pokemon heat ran shouldn't have had any business taking on this was especially exacerbated by the popularity of protect on pokemon like ferrothorn that volcanian should have been dominating which instead scouted its move effortlessly and worsened by the fact volcanian with its stealth rock weakness and unimpressive speed couldn't afford to be switching in and out over and over again it was the direct opposite of its most immediate point of comparison the fast rock resistant keldeo plus specs on volcanian was largely overkill due to its immense natural strength and the fact that it had the coverage to smack so much of the metagame super effectively a new set emerged substitute three attacks with leftovers and with it volcanian found consistency in dismantling the opposition it had the flexibility to switch moves and substitute punish protect incredibly hard while also dodging thunder wave from clefable it also ensured that opponents couldn't pivot around volcanian's moves nearly as safely for example if volcanian was on the field and was just attacking you could pivot around it and try to get your faster pokemon in against a move it resisted like scarf tyranitar into flamethrower however if volcanian subbed as you tried to switch around it it would thanks to the protection of sub against counterattacks, safely be able to bludgeon whatever switched in furthermore the addition of leftovers meant volcanian wasn't nearly as hampered by stealth rock which gave it more room to threaten the opponent offensively while letting it actually use its defensive profile as well okay so sub volcanian was great but it still needed support to help with the hazard weakness it wasn't just rocks after all but also spikes as a result volcanian wound up finding its way onto balance teams featuring strong anti-hazard measures most commonly extra drill which had established itself as the best hazard control in the tier as well as one of the best pokemon in general they also enjoyed using Deancey as their mega as the mere threat of its magic bounce was often an effective deterrent against opposing hazards such teams didn't just facilitate volcanian but highly valued its explosive power in breaking through defensive cores and matchups against other bulky teams especially once it began incorporating sludge wave over substitute into its moveset to really destroy clefable eventually bulky offensive teams in need of some backbone turned to volcanian for its defensive capability especially since even in a support capacity it was so incredibly threatening thanks to its huge natural power stab combination and ability to dish out burns as sticky web offense teams were tearing through the metagame physically defensive volcanian stood in their way it was so bulky it could easily survive a plus two mega scissor superpower after stealth rock it didn't just stuff mega scissor and help out massively against bisharp either though it was already incredible with haze or roar it also helped its team on the massively threatening volcarona and manaphy this was enormous in being able to take on a team style so threatening that many players wanted it banned bulky volcarona wasn't just good against hyper offense either haze or roar also helped its team thwart some of the most dangerous set of sweepers on bulkier teams like combine clefable and suicune plus going defensive actually sometimes made it more threatening in the sense of it being harder to revenge kill even stab earthquakes from the tier's defining grounds lander's theory and garchomp glyscore and the aforementioned extra drill tended to bounce right off it finally players even began experimenting with scarf volcanian as such a hard hitter takes on a different dimension of threat when it goes fast being able to plow through offensive teams with newfound ease even once the surprise factor wears off overall volcanian was a late bloomer but once its potential was unlocked it established itself as a hugely impactful presence in the oraz ou metagame Volcanian was largely overlooked in early Sun and Moon. Burn damage being nerfed to 6.25% per turn didn't help, nor did the addition of Greninja. But Volcanian saw some later use for its ability to completely dissect the defensive course that had become popular. With Substitute, it completely dominated Toxapex one-on-one, -on -one, and with Earth Power, ensured Toxapex couldn't try to stall it out. Other defensive staples Toxapex was often paired with, like Magirna, Celesteela, Ferrothorn, Tapu Bulu, Tangrowth, Amoongus, and Gliscor, were destroyed even harder. Volcanian generally 
preferred leftovers, but with Waterium Z, it could gain an extra burst of power to become even more effective at ripping through the few Pokemon these teams had that didn't completely collapse against it, namely Clefable. Sometimes it expanded its reach to destroying more offensive teams as well by equipping a Shukaberry, letting it better take Zygarde's Thousand Arrows, Heatran's Earth Power, or all manner of Earthquakes, thus completely turning the tables on would-be revenge killers. In a similar vein, Volcanion loved the presence of Tapu Bulu's grassy terrain, weakening Earthquakes and providing passive recovery alike. Defensively, Volcanion's Water Absorb was quite useful once again, this time providing safety against Specs Ash Greninja's devastating Hydro Pump. As such, it had a solid role at the end of Sun and Moon OU. Then Ultra Sun and Moon came around, and Volcanion's role expanded. The fog being added to so many Pokemon's move pools made clearing Stealth Rock easier than ever. In fact, Volcanion received the fog itself. However, its talents in OU were more suited to wall breaking while letting teammates like Tornado Therion do the defogging, and thus it saw occasionally appearances on certain balance scenes in the same way it did in Gen 6, though not nearly the same impact as it had previously. Volcanion's real home in Ultra Sun and Moon OU was on rain teams, where its presence was still really felt. It wasn't just that rain powered steam eruption to obscenely high levels, although it did. It was twofold. One, rain teams tended to struggle against slower, bulkier teams, and Volcanion utterly ruined those. Two, rain teams could struggle with their own rain powering up the opponent's water moves, most notably on Greninja, and Volcanion's water absorb provided an answer to that. Volcanion was far from a spammable Pokemon, but it had a legitimate place in Ultra Sun and Moon OU, and was potentially one of the most terrifying Pokemon one could run into. Of course, with its limited role in OU, Volcanion found its real Gen 7 home to be UU. In Sun and Moon, it was a solid special attacker, if a bit unspectacular, but it was mainly available for being able to stifle the terrifying Primarina while being able to dish out similarly threatening water type offense itself, though its rock's weaknesses was a major drawback, as was the fact that unlike Primarina, it was stopped by Latias and Hydreigon. In Ultra Sun and Moon, Volcanium became much easier to use thanks to the Fog, which led to its most common set, an offensive variant which dished out plenty of damage in its own right, but even if it was faced with a wall like Blissey, as well as its continued frustration with Laddie and Hydra, it could still be useful via hazard removal. This utility made it much easier to slap on teams than an all-out attacking set like Specs. Volcanium was a particularly efficient defogger thanks to its amazing natural bulk and matchup against common entry hazard setters like Mega Aggron, Hippowdon, Rhyperior, Mega Steelix, and Cobalion. Sure, it didn't wall them permanently, but it wasn't supposed to, and its excellent tanking ability and offensive threat meant it got the job done perfectly well with its fast pace it was meant to, especially since it even tended to run Shukaberry to give it even more security and flexibility. Volcanium was also excellent in helping counter one of the biggest threats in the tier, Scizor, while still helping check Primarina. Volcanium had some variety to its game too, and wasn't just beholden to its offensive defog set. With Toxic, it could lure in and ruin Latias and Hydreigon, and though it was incredibly specific, it could potentially destroy Stall by running Fighting MZ boosted superpowers off of its forgotten yet high attack stat, which thrashed Blissey and basically won the game on the spot if it connected. Given the stranglehold Stall had on the metagame, this was more viable than such a specific set generally would have been. The main issue with Volcanium was that it was slow and had common weaknesses to attacking types from common threats like Nidoqueen, Nidoking, Terrakion, Mega Manetric, Rotom Heat, Mega Aerodactyl, Latias, and more. Meaning that in games against offensive teams, it could struggle to find opportunity to switch in and could feel like dead weight. As such, it was pretty hard to fit on a team. It was still a perfectly solid Pokemon that could potentially put in enormous work. It was just on the specific side. And so Generation 7 was an offbeat yet solid one for Volcanion. Volcanion joined Generation 8 in the Crown Tundra and was finally able to live in a world where it wasn't hampered by Stealth Rock thanks to the addition of Heavy Duty Boots. It was passed over in OU at first and so it returned to UU, which was a mixed bag for it. On the one hand, there was no more Scizor to check as the Red Bug was OU itself and Primarina receiving Calm Mind meant Volcanion couldn't really check it anymore either. On the other hand, there was no more Latias to deal with as the Red Dragon had been banned. Furthermore, the presence of Boots made the Fog less essential, meaning Volcanion could freely throw Toxic into its moveset to ruin the likes of Hydreigon, Mantine, and Restless Primarina. Regardless, Volcanion's middling speed and prominent weaknesses, which resulted in poor matchups against common Pokemon like Diggersby, Naiho Eagle, Thunderous T, Rotom W, and Zygarde 10%, meant it was a rather specific addition to a team. It didn't do too well against the immensely popular Salamence either. It maintained a solid niche as a wall breaker because outside of dedicated counters like Guzzlord and Chansey, there was nothing that could actually handle it particularly safely. But since it was 
was a high maintenance Pokemon, it didn't see much usage, and as a result, it dropped to RU for the first time. Their Volcanium was excellent in RU. It went back to Defogging, largely because its dual stab alone was so good that it could hit essentially the entire tier for big damage. All it really needed was Toxic in the last move slot, so even Pokemon that theoretically countered it, like Seismitoad, Milotic, Gastrodon, and Noivern, couldn't really stand up to it that well. Its good matchup with Stealth Rock setters like Metagross, Stack Attacker, Rhyperior, and Steelix, reminiscent of the previous generation, made it even better. Volcanium was constantly contributing something or other to a team, or often many things simultaneously and effortlessly, whether it was removing hazards, smashing through defensive cores on popular balance teams, and even providing phenomenal defensive utility as a check to massively threatening Pokemon like Ghost of Leopod, Entei, and Darmanitan. Though it didn't resist its fighting stab, Volcanium's huge defense and potential to pivot into quad resistance steel stab meant it could even help against the terrifying Cobalion. Volcanium fit on a wide style of teams and was a consistent in-game performer, leading to its consideration as one of the best Pokemon in RU until April 2022, at which point it shot back up to status as a legitimate OU Pokemon for the first time since Generation 6. It would stay there for the rest of the generation. But why did people start using Volcanion and OU to begin with? Especially to the point where its usage was so high that it made the enormous leap from RU to OU? Basically, Volcanion was a bruiser with great defensive utility. It wasn't going to wall large swaths of teams, but it had a plethora of valuable resists and it had the bulk to take on one big hit, which could be game-changing in the high-powered OU metagame. And of course, once it hit the field, the opponent was faced with the daunting proposition of switching into its ferocious mix of power and status. Even if the opponent did have something that could take its onslaught decently without instant collapse, most notably Slow King, it still wasn't going to be painless. Thus, Volcanium was consistently impactful, especially when Slowbro and its much lower special defense was used instead. Nearly non-existent was the game where Volcanium's lengthy list of resistances didn't come into play somehow. Its water immunity was particularly tremendous in stifling Urshifu's rapid powerful surging strikes and Barris Gouda's rain-boosted flip turns and liquidations. Volcanium's quadruple resistance to steel was also superb in checking Melmetal and its brutally powerful double iron bash, especially since Volcanium could actually threaten Melmetal back, and if it came down to it, it wasn't lethally afraid of superpower or even earthquake. This was especially valuable since Melmetal was considered by many to be dangerous to the point of banworthiness. Speaking of Volcanium's quadruple resist, it also helped stave off Weavile's terrifying triple axle, and since Volcanium didn't just have resist but excellent bulk as well, if necessary it could take knockoffs from Weavile, even a boosted one. It was similarly effective against Kartana. This ability to help dance around the many difficult to answer threats in Gen 8 OU meant Volcanium was consistently useful and of course it was excellent on the other side of the spectrum too. It tore through OU's walls effortlessly. Ferrothorn, Clefable, Lander's T, Buzzswole, Heatran, Corviknight, even the likes of Assault Vest, Galarian, Slowking struggled to stand up to it over time and with all the switch moves running around OU alongside its newfound immunity to Stealth Rock, Volcanium got plenty of opportunities to switch in safely against the many Pokemon it's scared to start wearing down and blasting through the opposition. Volcanium offered stability. It would be able to take hits and it would be able to dish them out to solid effect, game after game. This consistency was incredibly valuable. So overall, Generation 8 was a massive success for Volcanium. And that's it, so how good was Volcanion actually? Well, it was a late bloomer in its debut generation, but it was thoroughly excellent once the player base figured out how to use its unique set of talents. Whether it was breaking walls, taking hits, or sometimes both, Volcanion became a fixture of Gen 6 OU. It had its moments in the following generation of OU, being very difficult to deal with for defensive teams when it was used, but it wasn't the most consistent choice, which led it to fall to UU. There, it was decent, though its famous flaws, unspectacular speed, and weaknesses to common attacks held it back. It had a another decent UU showing in the following generation, but was once again on the specific side, leading it to drop to RU, where it was absolutely terrific, but that didn't last because the player base discovered Volcanium to be so good in OU that it shot all the way up there through usage, and it made its home for the rest of the generation. Overall, Volcanium has had a competitive career that has been interesting and unique as it has been successful. Thanks for watching everyone, and as always, if you like the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Swipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content, and in the comments i want to know what do you think about competitive volcanian would you give it anything else to have it be even better in ou whatever it is let me know in the comments and thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos and thank you to everyone else watching as well And follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.